For the most part, modern dual-clutch transmissions are pretty sophisticated pieces of engineering that can deliver lightning-fast shifts and impressive fuel economy. But there are still certain everyday driving habits that, over time, can cause catastrophically expensive damage to your transmission. One of the biggest things you should avoid doing with any dual clutch system is treating it like a conventional automatic transmission. I know it seems logical to drive it the same way you would drive any other automatic, but using traditional automatic driving techniques on a dual clutch system is a mistake that can literally cost you over $4,000 in repairs. The first and most destructive habit you can develop with a dual clutch transmission is allowing your car to creep forward in traffic the way you would with a conventional automatic. You release the brakes slightly and let the car drift forward at two or three miles per hour while using light brake pressure to control your speed. It feels completely natural because that is exactly how torque converter automatics are designed to work, but here's what's actually happening inside your dual clutch transmission during this seemingly harmless creeping behavior. Your transmission is trying to engage the clutch to move the car forward, but you are controlling the speed with brake pressure, and this forces the clutch to slip continuously. Continuous slipping generates massive amounts of heat, and heat is what literally burns up clutch material and turns your sophisticated transmission into an expensive paperweight. Think about it this way. In a manual transmission, if you tried to hold the car at a slow crawl by partially engaging the clutch while riding the brake, you would burn out the clutch in a matter of hours. Your dual clutch transmission works on the same basic principle, except a computer is doing the clutch work instead of your left foot. The difference between your dual clutch system and a conventional automatic is crucial here. Traditional automatics use torque converters that can slip all day long without damage. Because the fluid coupling in a torque converter is designed to handle continuous slipping at low speeds, your dual clutch transmission does not have this luxury. When you force it to creep, the clutch pack has to slip to maintain that slow speed, and clutch friction material simply cannot handle continuous slipping the way a fluid coupling can. Real-world examples of this damage are everywhere once you know what to look for. Dual clutch transmission overheating affects multiple manufacturers, including Kia, Hyundai, Honda, Skoda, and Ford. The overheating problem appears consistently across different brands, and owners regularly report uncomfortable bucking and poor performance while stuck in heavy traffic. Every time you creep in traffic, every time you inch forward with the brake partially applied, you are generating heat that dry clutch systems simply cannot handle effectively. The second destructive mistake that makes the creeping problem exponentially worse is riding your brake while moving, which is absolutely devastating to dual clutch systems. You are creeping forward in traffic and you are using light brake pressure to control your speed. This creates a situation where both systems are fighting each other and the clutch bears the brunt of this mechanical conflict. Here's what brake riding does to your transmission. The transmission control unit monitors brake pedal pressure and light or incomplete brake pressing may not fully disengage the clutch, causing it to slip like riding the clutch in a manual transmission. This damages the clutch over time because firm brake application leads to clutch disengagement, preventing clutch slip while light brake pressing keeps the clutch partially engaged and slipping. The manuals for many dual clutch systems specifically recommend applying brakes firmly when stopped in gear to protect the clutch, but most drivers never read this critical information. The type of dual clutch system in your car determines just how vulnerable it is to this kind of damage. Dry clutch systems are found in popular cars like the Ford Focus and Fiesta, many Hyundai and Kia models, some Honda vehicles, and various European cars. These systems are particularly sensitive because the clutches are not bathed in cooling oil like wet clutch systems. They rely primarily on air cooling, which means they have very limited ability to handle the heat generated by slipping. If you are driving one of these vehicles and you are using conventional, automatic transmission techniques, you are essentially playing automotive roulette. Wet clutch systems like those found in Volkswagen DSG transmissions and BMW systems have their clutches bathed in oil that helps carry away heat and provides much better cooling. These systems can tolerate some creeping and low-speed maneuvering without immediate damage, though it is still not ideal for long-term durability. But even if you have a wet clutch system, you are not completely safe because excessive creeping and improper driving techniques will eventually cause problems, even with better cooling systems.
The third most damaging mistake drivers make with dual clutch transmissions is using throttle input to hold your vehicle stationary on hills without proper brake application. Using throttle input to hold your position on hills forces the clutch to fight against gravity while simultaneously slipping to maintain your position, and this creates an enormous amount of heat in a very short time. Unlike level ground creeping, where the clutch only has to overcome rolling resistance, hill holding requires the clutch to work against the full weight of your vehicle trying to roll backward. The thermal load on dry clutch systems during hill holding is simply beyond what these components can handle. A documented case shows exactly what happens when you ignore this advice. A Kia Seltos experienced a steep grade press brake pedal warning, followed by a transmission overheating warning during stop-and-go traffic on a steep incline. The car became stuck in second gear and began jerking, requiring the driver to put the car in park for a minute to resolve the issue. This overheating occurs because constant shifting between first and second gear and bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on hills can cause clutch overheating, and dry clutches have poor high temperature tolerance compared to wet clutch systems. The primary recommendation for preventing dual clutch damage is to use the handbrake or parking brake to hold the car stationary on inclines instead of relying on clutch slip or throttle input. When stopped on hills, you should use neutral when stationary for more than 10 to 15 seconds and engage auto hold or parking brake to prevent clutch wear. In stop and go traffic on hills, the key is avoiding creeping with the brake partially pressed for long durations and instead use the brake fully or shift to neutral. The fourth destructive habit that can destroy your transmission faster than any other single action is misusing launch control and aggressive driving features. Drivers frequently misuse launch control by holding the brake while revving the engine with the accelerator pressed, which can damage the clutch as it tries to move against the brakes. While launch control features are entertaining, they put maximum stress on the clutch packs by engaging them at high RPM with maximum torque, which accelerates wear patterns significantly. The key is understanding that these features are designed for occasional use, not regular operation, and frequent use of launch control features accelerates clutch and axle wear substantially. The fifth critical error that can destroy your dual clutch transmission through simple neglect is skipping the fluid maintenance that keeps your transmission alive. The most critical factor in preventing dual clutch failure and extending lifespan is comprehensive fluid maintenance, including both actuator fluid and transmission fluid. In Honda models specifically, failure to change or maintain actuator fluid can lead to transmission failure regardless of model year, and the Honda manual often does not explicitly mention changing actuator fluid, suggesting reliance on dealership service knowledge. I recommend changing actuator fluid every 10,000 kilometers in hot climates due to faster fluid degradation, while in cooler climates, you can extend the interval to about 20,000 kilometers. For transmission fluid, I recommend changing it every 35,000 to 40,000 kilometers, or every three years, despite manufacturer claims of sealed for life systems. Moisture contamination in the actuator fluid system emerges as a critical but often overlooked cause of dual clutch overheating. When moisture enters the actuator fluid chamber, it lowers the boiling point of the fluid, causing the actuator system to malfunction under normal operating temperatures. This moisture contamination leads to delayed gear engagement, clutch operation problems, and eventual overheating as the system struggles to maintain proper clutch control. The actuator fluid chamber's location under the air filter box in some models makes it susceptible to moisture infiltration, particularly in humid climates. And the sixth devastating mistake involves ignoring your transmission's sophisticated warning systems until it is too late. Your dual clutch transmission has warning systems designed to save it from destruction. But when your dashboard lights up with transmission overheating alerts, you have minutes, not hours, before permanent damage occurs. Some dual clutch systems will display transmission overheating warnings on the dashboard, but drivers who ignore these warnings or continue driving aggressively despite high transmission temperatures risk severe clutch damage. The transmission control unit monitors clutch temperatures and activates staged protection responses when temperatures exceed safe limits. Initially, the system provides warnings to the driver and may instruct drivers to avoid holding the vehicle on slopes greater than 5% using throttle input, 
As temperatures continue to rise, the system progresses through multiple protection stages, eventually restricting the vehicle to using only one clutch or disabling gear engagement entirely. In extreme cases, the system enters a protection mode where the vehicle must remain stationary for 20 minutes with clutches completely disengaged to allow cooling before normal operation can resume. Environmental conditions significantly influence dual-clutch overheating patterns, with both hot climates and cold moist conditions presenting particular challenges. Hot and dusty environments, mountainous terrain and frequent traffic congestion create particularly challenging conditions for dry clutch systems. However, the overheating and juddering issues tend to worsen in cold, moist weather conditions and can improve with warmer, drier conditions because cold weather affects clutch surface characteristics, leading to increased friction and heat generation during engagement. The seventh major driving error involves driving aggressively immediately after starting your car before the transmission has reached proper operating temperature. Drivers often engage in aggressive driving immediately after cold starts, before allowing the transmission and engine to fully warm up. This practice increases wear significantly because the dual clutch components have not reached optimal operating temperatures, and cold transmission fluid has different viscosity characteristics. As a result, transmission fluid does not provide optimal lubrication and cooling for the clutch packs. The electronic control systems also operate differently when cold, potentially allowing more clutch slip than would occur at normal operating temperatures. Early TCM programming in some Ford Focus models allowed excessive clutch slipping during cold operation, which led to roasted clutch packs in many vehicles. But later software updates improved clutch longevity by reducing slippage during warm-up periods. You should warm the car up properly before driving hard to ensure optimal operating temperatures and the system should not be subjected to aggressive driving when cold. The eighth critical mistake involves misusing paddle shifters and manual mode which can confuse your transmission's electronic brain and accelerate clutch wear. While driving a dual clutch in manual mode does not inherently damage the gearbox, drivers make several specific mistakes when using paddle shifters. One documented error involves drivers aggressively forcing rapid downshifts without understanding that repeatedly testing the transmission's limits is inadvisable despite modern protective systems. Another mistake involves drivers who fail to downshift properly before stops, missing opportunities to reduce clutch wear through engine braking instead of relying solely on friction brakes. Some drivers also misuse manual mode by holding gears too long, particularly in stop-and-go traffic, where automatic mode would better preserve the clutch. I recommend pulling both paddle shifters when stopping in manual mode to disengage clutches and avoid constant creeping. However, some mechanics caution that pulling both paddles while crawling may increase clutch wear due to frequent re-engagement. The ninth destructive habit involves ignoring early warning signs of clutch wear or transmission problems before they become catastrophic failures. Drivers often dismiss symptoms like juddering, shuddering, hesitation, or unusual noises as normal dual-clutch behavior rather than recognizing them as indicators of developing problems. Common symptoms of dual clutch issues include jerks during gear shifting and occasional clutch slips if maintenance is neglected. In many systems, juddering or shuddering during takeoff or low speed operation is frequently reported, often worsening after 30,000 to 60,000 miles. Juddering and shuddering are most frequently reported issues with dry clutch systems, often occurring during cold moist weather conditions and at low speeds or when starting off. The key insight is that dual clutch transmissions require decisive inputs rather than gradual partial inputs. The system works best when either stopped completely or moving with full clutch engagement. The middle ground of partial engagement causes expensive damage. To minimize clutch wear during traffic, keep your foot fully on the brake until ready to move. Then fully release the brake and apply gentle throttle to engage the clutch smoothly. Drive it like a manual by avoiding creeping and not lugging the engine. Like I said at the beginning, dual clutch transmissions are incredibly sophisticated pieces of engineering, but one of the fastest ways to turn that sophistication into an expensive paperweight is by treating it like something it is not. Understanding that they require clutch engagement for power transfer and that driving technique directly impacts clutch health is essential for preventing costly repairs. 
<laughs> the economic reality is that the difference between proper and improper dual clutch driving can literally mean the difference between 200,000 miles of reliable service and a catastrophic failure at 40,000 miles, with repair costs ranging from thousands for clutch replacement to tens of thousands for complete transmission rebuilds. Made it to the end? That means you actually care about keeping your transmission alive. Here's a wild fact. Your dual clutch can hit 400 degrees during aggressive driving, hot enough to literally cook an egg on your clutch pack. Thanks for watching, and remember, drive it like a manual, not like your grandma's camera.